How's it going everybody, Michalo? And today I wanna to do a follow-up video to my live test, is Google always listening? Because there's a number of things about that video that make my experiment pretty much worthless beyond mere curiosity and centralizing the argument. But first I'd like to thank all the new subscribers to my channel with a special shout out to Seraphim190, an excellent game reviewer with outstanding content, and I encourage everyone to stick around for my future content and ring that bell to get notified anytime I post a new video. So when I made that live test video, I was pretty certain that my microphone on my computer and the mic on my phone were always being passively tapped to hear words that advertisers could use for targeting purposes. And you would think that my video would have solidified that idea, but after reading so many comments that detail why it's an unlikely scenario, as well as comments pointing out how flawed my own video is, I decided I wanted to share some of those points here. So the first issue that basically nullifies my experiment is that I clicked on the first dog ad that I found. This was a huge mistake and completely negated any of my subsequent results. I didn't even think about it at the time, but by clicking that ad, I literally performed the exact function that advertisers want the most clicks. And so of course after signaling direct interest in dog toy ads, the targeting algorithms changed the ads on my preloaded pages to dog toy ads. But this would mean that that original first dog toy ad I clicked on would have been a simple coincidence, which is entirely possible. But I don't like coincidences. The other possibility is that it's fake and that I simply had another person in another room googling dog toys like crazy during the part I talked about dog toys. A good idea, but that's not what happened either. There is a third reason why a dog toy ad showed up right after I rambled on about dog toys directly into my mind microphone, and that reason is that I was live streaming directly to YouTube, which is of course recording, processing, and analyzing my speech and turning it into text for automatic closed captioning, creating a little text file associated with my account that is probably used to target ads just like my Gmail, Google Docs, text messages on my Android phone, and search history. And as others pointed out, this could also account for the fact that we saw Ford ads pop up, as I repeated the word affordable. Affordable. The algorithms could have easily picked up on the word Ford and targeted a Ford ad to me. Now remember, none of this would be illegal since it would all be spelled out in their terms of service and agreed to by its users beforehand. And if Google works anything like Facebook, then when you live stream or upload video, that is specifically when they're analyzing and processing the audio. Watch what Mark Zuckerberg says in response to a congressman's question regarding whether Facebook is listening to your mic to target ads. Well, I've heard constituents fear that Facebook is mining audio from uh, their mobile devices uh, for the purpose of, of ad targeting. We don't do that. To be clear, we do allow people to take videos. Of course, videos also have audio, so, um, so we do, while you're taking a video, um, record that and use that to make the service better. Now, the initial reason I did this video as a live stream was because I thought it would make a much more compelling video if it worked. Now I think it's the single biggest flaw in my method because there's absolutely no doubt that Google was recording me the whole time. I literally told it to record me. So for anyone who's commented that I should have used Wireshark to monitor the outgoing network traffic, what do you think it would have showed you? It would have showed you exactly what you're worried about, that all of my audio and video was going straight to Google because I was live streaming. Now the final part of my video that I'd like to address is a comment I've seen pop up a lot, and it's the accusation that my video is somehow gay. Well, my videos are in a large way just like my children, and intending to insult one of them by calling it gay can be quite harmful, particularly because this video is in fact gay. And he came out to me while I was shooting this video, and it was very hard for him. Dad, do you have a minute? What is it? Dad, we need to talk. There's something I have to tell you. Yeah, of course. Come on in. So, what's on your mind, big guy? This isn't gonna be easy for you to hear, Dad. Okay, well, what is it? Dad, I'm gay. Is that all? Are you mad? <laughs> no, of course I'm not upset. If you're happy, I'm happy. I just want you to be happy, son. Hell, I like Nickelback. Not really. I love you, Dad. I love you too, videotape son. No homo. All right, everybody, I hope that brings a strong bit of skepticism to my original video, as well as general skepticism to the whole idea that our microphones are tapped at all times. If you like the music in my videos, it all comes from a good friend of mine, Luke Floyd of Faith in Foxholes. He's a brilliant musician and genuinely one of the best human beings I've ever met in my entire life. And that is no exaggeration. Him and his wife have adopted three children from China, all with varying degrees of special needs. And unfortunately, one of those three children passed away recently due to complications related to his heart disability. Luke is coming out with a new album soon. Click on the link in the description to check out his music. Thanks everybody for watching. If you like this video, thumbs up. If you hated it, thumbs down. And as always, please subscribe.